welcome to another edition of uncovering india recently india's external affairs minister s jay shankar handed over the georgian government and the georgian orthodox church church the relics of queen khedavan a 17th century saint who was murdered by the uh, safavid empire the relics of queen khedavan were brought to goa by augustinian monks after her death and were kept in the saint augustine complex the relics were delivered in 2005 in 2013 dna testing confirmed their authenticity prompting georgia to seek their return and we have with us two very important personalities uh, we have dr uh, n tahir who is the former uh, director of archaeological survey of india who had led the entire excavation process and preservation of the relics before they were handed over to georgian government and we have father jokim loyola parera who is the secretary to archbishop of goa and who will give us the perspective of how uh, what role did the church play in goa in preserving the relics and also how does this event reflect as far as the skills and uh, the uh, work skills and abilities of asi is concerned and image of goa per se which is known only as a tourism destination but also now it has a historical importance uh, as far as connecting with another country is concerned so uh, starting with uh, tai sir and uh, father parera welcome to this session of uncovering india so father uh, uh, starting with you how do you uh, see this entire event the uh, bringing of the relics to goa and being buried in goa uh, augustine church uh, compound and then it's handing over and the foreign minister appreciating goa and its people in front of the uh, georgian government for its role uh, in preserving the relics so how do you see this all these events okay <clears throat> first let me start by saying yes i am the secretary to the archbishop of goa but i am not his spokesman so whatever i say it will be me and uh, i guess that i have been uh, roped into this conversation also because i took part in this whole process of the search uh, for the relics of saint uh, queen ketavan in the saint augustine uh, church ruins so th that's that's so it's in my capacity that i am speaking okay good now i really appreciated first of all that uh, the asi goa circle should start this excavation i suppose at the request of the georgian government after they came to know that uh, the relics of saint ketavan were buried somewhere in the ruins of saint augustine church i must congratulate the asi and especially mr tahir who headed the excavation activity i know him personally he is a good friend of mine and uh, that's how i was also kind of connected in some way uh, with this whole process now you asked me about the augustine and max saint augustine's monastery was one of the most important church uh, buildings in old goa in fact a, a british traveler of that time of the 17th century mm, i forget his name while describing the facade of the monastery of saint augustine he said that the facade puts to shame the facade of the university of edinburgh in england so uh, that's what the glorious past in old goa was we had magnificent churches and church buildings and monasteries and saint augustine's monastery was perhaps the best uh, sample of this architecture and art because it was a vast monastery having other um, other 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 attachments they had two colleges attached to it the church of course attached to it 
it was one of the most important uh, religious centers in Old Goa. Now, these two uh, Augustine and monks who went to Persia and uh, they were witnesses to the martyrdom of St. Ketavan. They very uh, piously or devotedly preserved the relics, the, the remains of this saint and brought part of them to go. Another part, perhaps the greater part of the, of the relics were given, were taken to Georgia. But I believe they were lost in Georgia with the time. And that's why the Georgia uh, people were dependent on the little relics that were brought to Goa. And they were uh, in the, in the St. Augustine's monastery. I pass it over now to Mr. Tahir. He will tell you how this whole thing began and how it progressed. Mr. Tahir. Uh, thank you, Father. Uh, after your brief introduction, uh, I would like to say, as you had mentioned, that you are a spokesperson for the bishop, but you're speaking in the personal capacity. Even me, I am a former director of Archives of India, and I have worked on this project from 2003 onwards till 2017, and when I retired. So I am speaking today in my personal capacity of the person who worked along with his team painstakingly from 2003 onwards till the bones went for the first time to Georgia in 2017, of which I happened to visit on the invitation of the University of uh, University from uh, Georgia, where they had honored me with an honorary doctorate. So I'm indebted to Goa, where I first started my independent work. I'm indebted to my department, Archaeology Survey of India, for making me in charge of this project. And for the country itself, which because of archaeology, because of the excavations, and because of the interpretation of what we could do ultimately in a scientific laboratory, this relic, which was very significant to the people of Georgia, because by now she had the queen mother was declared as a saint and getting the relics back to the country after 400 years is really seen to be felt when you go to that country who is a very religious country following the orthodox order and it is very difficult for us to understand as an archaeologist who believes in science to express emotions emotions cannot be expressed in science emotion cannot be interpreted in archaeology but I, as a person who has been educated and who has a rooting in the Indian culture because of uh, my education in different Catholic schools, Protestant schools, Kendra Vidyale, and, and other settings, I could understand the significance of this work. And that is when, how I interacted with the church in general and Father Layola in particular and other members of the order in Goa to understand the significance the site is not only a world related site, which for the tourist uh, to come and be and see, but it is also the parishioners, the locals, parishioners of Goa and the parishioners of India and the world to come for veneration. So Goa, as you had mentioned, Saswaji, is only marketed from a certain perspective. That perspective is, is accepted, but there's much more to Goa beyond just our touristic aspects. We have got heritage not only heritage of one culture, but heritage of all the mainstream Indian cultures. If you go to Fonda, you see a different culture. If you go to, uh, yeah, in Fonda itself, we have got a, a, a amalgamation of two cultures out there. Then we have got many other uh, small, small activities, uh, which, are, which are very rustic, but very native to Goa happening in the village. We have got the green forest. So let us be very holistic in our understanding of our culture, which is mistakenly believed to belong only to one culture, which is expressive. So if you look within, we have got cultures within culture, like picture within picture. The same thing happened in archaeology. The Me as an uh, archaeologist who was working in 2003 onwards has to look back in time because I was the fifth and the last team who were excavating at the site. Before me, they were my predecessors. 
there were four different teams of archaeologists of Archaeology Survey of India who were trying to trace the remains of the elusive relics of the queen. So the, it started off way back in 1988-89 onwards when the delegation of Georgia did come to India, interacted with my predecessor, uh, A.K. Sharmaji, who is a Padmasri, and later with uh, other people who took charge of Goa, Mr. Mamad, who himself is a Padmasri, then my other colleagues, Dr. Varpa Satrao and uh, G.S. Narsimanji. So all of them were trying to trace the remains of the queen because, because of the information what was given for the information what they got and the site, which is the St. Augustine complex, as father has described, is one of the most unique sites first on the holy hill. It overlooks all old Goa. And if you can go and see it right now, even in its desolate self, with a one-third tower standing tall, having commanding view, you can imagine what it must have been there at uh, in 17th century. As father has mentioned, as quoting a traveler, that is one of the most classical church that was there, not only in Old Goa, but it could be compared with that in Scotland, Edinburgh, or, or also in Rome. So in my team, I had Abhijit Ambekar, uh, who's my colleague, who's junior, is doing a very good work in Gujarat. In our team, indirectly, was also a person associated from Portugal. He was a student studying in Goa. He's Sid Mandiratha. So archaeological work is not just Tahir sitting in here and talking, but his full team. Taking from that what you said, since this is a very old structure and which had uh, already was in ruins and the relics were buried deep inside and you all had to excavate it. So what were the challenges involved in first in identifying the location and then taking out and ensuring that there is no damage because it's buried inside the uh, mud for so long. So what were the challenges involved and how do you how did you tackle it? Yeah, I would answer the question uh, in between. Does Father Lavala want to say anything to what I've communicated? Father, you want to say add, add something or should I continue? Um, no, no, I could add something. Uh, yes, I Father. was I was in touch with this whole search for the relics uh, even before you came, Mr. Yes, because Father. I think it was at the time of Mr. Muhammad. Ah. Yes, 1994, if I'm not mistaken, 1993 or 94, Dr. Jose Pereira, another great man, uh, uh, authority on many subjects, uh, but he was not an archaeologist as such. He was brought to the site in order to help ASI to uh, pinpoint or to, 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 to locate exactly the place where the relics would be buried. And he had with him the text of uh, said the relics were under the second window, the chapter chapel of the Augustinian monastery. Now, at that time, there was no idea that there was another chapter chapel in the monastery. They all thought that uh, the the relics were buried under the second second window of the epistle side of the main church. So I was present there when the excavations were taking place and when Dr. Jose Pereira was also present and they were trying to excavate and found that. So that was uh, something that was missed out. Uh, I mean, all of us thought that uh, the, the, the relics were there, but then we, uh, we, were, we were mistaken. It was only when Mr. Sid Mendirata came and was part, I think he was a post-research kind of a, uh, uh, an intern in the Goa Architectural College. He was doing a one-year uh, specialization course in the Architectural College and he got involved with this. And he is the one who, being a Portuguese person and knowing Portuguese so well, he helped locate exactly that uh, uh, the, 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 the site of the, uh, of the relics was not the main church, but was the so-called chapter chapel. And here you come into the picture and I too, because I am part of the excitement that the ASI had when they discovered in the end where the chapter chapel was. 
So as the excavations proceeded, uh, there was one moment of great excitement, first to say, oh, this is the chapter chapel. And even I was surprised that the chapter chapel was much smaller than the bigger church. And uh, even, you know, the, the, the first window and the second window and all that, it was a smaller compartment than the rest of the church. So now you can carry on, Mr. Tahir. Uh, I, yeah. I place uh, myself you. in both. Tell me. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for getting the contact. And just now, Father had mentioned about my friend, Sid Mendirata, the exchange student from Portugal. I would like to clarify this because there's a lot of talk about our teamwork and how we have worked. And uh, Abhijit, me, and Sid, and my other uh, uh, Raju Pereira and my team. Sid was the exchange student for uh, taking up his architecture course. And when I first met Sid, the excavations had not taken place. And he was also relating with the story of the Queen Ketavan. So also Shika, my wife. So they wanted me to search for the remains. I said, before me, there were four teams who had worked and all of them are established archeologists. When they could not find the remains. So I was not very keen to take up the uh, uh, challenge and take it forward. Because for me, my main aim was to conserve the site, to preserve the site and to expand the site for the visitors. And this had demonstrated in many of my works that, I, uh, was, uh, that was being carried out as to invite people and have a show there. So Sid was, I still remember vividly in 2003, 2004, he took me to the sacristy of the, uh, uh, of the main church. And he says, the sacristy is the second window where he's 90% sure the remains must have been there. The sacristy has been excavated by my predecessors and then nothing remains. So Sid was again off target. Sid was saying the sacristy must have been the place. And he said 90% sure that was there. So no one knew where the relics were or where the tombstones were because the excavation had not yet been taken place. And that is on record. The record that excavation took place only in 2004. So nobody knew the remains where it was because and I, I was not searching for the remains and I was wanting the site only to be open for the visitors and to preserve the site. So no one was aware where the remains were and we were not searching for it. So that is the real story. I'll take it forward from here through a PPT and come to it. Now coming back to our Augustine complex, this is the aerial view. This is the front view of imagine it's bell tower. It's only a one third bell tower. Imagine the facade. Imagine the facade of the church. This is the facade of the church. When you see the facade, such a grand facade of 46 meter tall bell tower, what could have been behind this? It is ground plus one, ground plus two, and it's a con church in a convent. So let us not be of the present. Let us go back to 17th century and imagine the people coming in, the trade activities happening, people coming and crisscrossing from Europe to India and, and even in uh, Far East coming here. So that is the grandeur of Goa. And this is within this, we have got this remain that comes up. So in search of the Russian lost queen. So I know the Georgian would not like the word Russia, but many times what happened, the Soviet Union was equated with Russia. We never knew at some point of time, there were 15 countries all merged into the Soviet Union, each of them independent, each of them having a culture, each of them having a heritage, which is unique in itself. So this was the story. You can see the date. The date is 1989. So this is how it happened. The story started. And the story is that the Queen Ketaban of Georgia was imprisoned by Shah Abbas for the political reason. Let us not use the word murder. She was put to death is better word that I as an archaeologist use. Brought to uh, Shiraz, Isfahan and put to death because of political reason. And two fathers from the Augustine and order who uh, came and uh, became the confessor of the queen. Then the queen was later was uh, canonized as a saint. After she was put to death, the bones were brought to old Goa and kept within the Augustine complex. So there is a positive connection between the Augustinians, the Orthodox, and the, uh, and the people who profess this religion. Father is a better uh, authority to speak on those terms. I would not touch on that. And I will quote father next time when I, am, when I hear him speak. So this is the church. This is how it looks. It was completely collapsed. So the work what we carried out here is scientific clearance by my predecessors and conservation. 
And this is what has happened. Different phases of work has taken place. First phase, second phase, third phase. I came into the fourth phase of the work. So here you see is that everything is buried. So even if Sid, people have said, has uh, has deciphered, he has deciphered after we excavated. So it is not him knowing where it is. So this is the thing that was given to me. This is what I got in 2003. So the area where uh, the, the, uh, the sacristy, the second window, which is visible on the right side, is where the Sid has said that this is where it could be 90%. So no one knew. You see, it's everything is buried. So how would a person know without even going to the site that what is there? We were surprised because this church at one point of time when it was completely under the Augustinian, their uh, people wrote historical records. Canonical records were kept in the church. And these canonical records were copied by an a, a author, a historian, a Silverico. And he has published the work in 12 volumes. And those volumes are there in the uh, at Porvarim in Sid Xavier's library. So this is where Sid comes in. When we got the, uh, the, the place, when we got this Manuel de Sequeira's uh, tombstone on the floor, who will excavate? The archaeologist excavates. Nobody else has got the permission to come and work in the, at the site. So after when we excavated the site, when we got the Manuel de Sequeira's tomb, then comes the exchange student. He's like, because he's always with us. He's my friend. Like Father Leola, I'm with Father Leola. Sipas is with us, Abhiji is with us. So when we came across this tombstone, when we were excavating the site in 2004, this gave us the clue. And this gave us the clue. Uh, then Sid said, I know about this reference. I said, Sid, how can you know about this reference when this, this is being excavated? He says, no, I studied in my master's course, in, in my uh, degree course. So then uh, he did the reference. Then he went to the library, came up with information that this most probably could be the chapter chapel that we are searching for. And then the archaeologists also knew because we were working at the site. Then we started the work and we made a presentation. Our first publication is in Mark. It is Tahir, Sid, and Abhijit. And the first publication was done before we found the relics, based on the tombstones, because then we had already come to know that this is the place. Because the word, the very word chapter chapel means a chapter chapel is a small chapel within the church. Chapter chapel is not the main church. So all the teams who were searching for them were searching in the main church. There's a controversy, which I'm not getting to the controversy, because they have said that this remains, we could not find. How could this team find? We could find it because it was not excavated at that point of time. So they were searching in the, like they were searching for the pin in the haystack. Nothing wrong. They were setting the foundation. Every work adds on to the next step. That's why we have said 16 years of search and 10 years of research. That is what an archaeologist always talks about. Others work to be respected. And this is the bone we found on the second window, on the epistle site. But this information, as Father said, Joe Sperera also had. This information was also there available with the Georgians, uh, with, with, the, with the Russians, when the first, uh, with the Soviets, when they first came. They gave the information of the second window. So everyone knew about the second window. But which second window? Not only do we have two chapels, we have many churches within the Augustine complex. So this is the bone that what we found in the context. But luckily, unfortunately, it was not in the place where it was supposed to be. So this is the documentation of Silver Ego. We consulted this. This is where Sid comes in. Everyone has played the role. This is the interpretation of the chapter chapel, the left side, the right side. I will not get into the controversy of left side, right side, because at some point of time, again, Father will come to my rescue. The, the, the father's... Uh, uh, conducted uh, the prayers facing the cross. And now we conduct the prayer facing the people, which I should say it was not done at that point of time. Again, Father will uh, explain this concept of epistle side and, and the gospel side, because people have, to, have told me, your interpretation is wrong because of the epistle and gospel. I said, no, my interpretation is right, because at that point of time, the people, the fathers face the cross as they do in Islam before they conduct the prayer. Anyway, this is the schematic view of what was found in the site. I'm not going into details. This is the excavation that's going on. That's me standing there. That's Shika, my wife, who's also an archaeologist working at the site. So this is nothing but a collapsed structure that has fallen. So how can we say we have got the remains? How do we say where is the inscription? How do we say where is the bones? Everything is being unearthed by us. This is the proof that our team came across the chapter chapel. We came across the bones. We came across... Bone was later. They came across the tombstones. We did the reference work. 
with the next question work each and every member contributed and we interacted with each and every including the church people including everyone even father leola and other people like father who were there we wanted information because we never knew information we wanted because i don't know portuguese sid knows portuguese i know a little i want to know more so as a team individually maybe i could not have cracked it but as a team i could crack it so whatever we do we bring it to the notice of people because some some information go and people are very educated they know portuguese they know latin there's another person uh, calling unfortunately is no more uh, so this is the schematic view and on the right side is the queen ketavan mentioned on the second window the remains were not there where it's supposed to be because the church collapsed and the tombstone the stone sarcophagus we have got for others but we don't have only for this that means the augustinians thought it was very important they must have taken away with them when they had left the place or there is another story to it father will again say yes or no there is a connection between santa monica and augustinian because santa monica is the mother of augustinian uh, said augustine and they is it's rumored that they could be an underground link between the two churches i'm making it more romantic and more mysterious between the two church so when the, they had abandoned this church santa monica was still active so they must have removed the relics from here or they must have removed the remains from here and taken it there so that all possibilities we looked into and this is where we bond on the bone it is not in context so that is why we wanted to go and do the scientific laboratory work to cross check and to validate our work so it is not that that the people in the science laboratory they could just identify it it is archaeology and history unless you have archaeology and history only then comes the science so human is the uh, and emotions and the veneration of the saint is the most important aspects of life at least in this context then comes our uh, archaeological interpretation then comes our scientific uh, validation so this is how we found the remains uh, basing on the uh, silverigo's publication even gulbenkian uh, he has done the historical records of uh, life and times of uh, queen ketavan and there are other records also in, in french there are other records also in germany the other records are also there in scotland and also also the son of queen ketavan Temoros he himself wrote, wrote a graphic uh, poetry on the his mothers and his uh, uh, on her sacrifice so this is our report so whatever we do if we don't back up with the scientific report authenticity is not there so we had to work from 2003 to 2009 first phase 2009 to 2012 second phase and only in 2013 we could get it uh, get the total uh, total scenario right but we had to wait for publication we had to wait for one year for publishing of data imagine you are having the results imagining you know you have got everything but we don't have a publication we wanted a publication to be published in a, in a reputed journal so that's why we have to wait and this is dipankar the first phase who have worked again people only talk of the present team who has who has worked we talk of neeraj we talk of sangarajan ji we talk of uh, uh, other people or tahir before this thing dr lalji singh work before the dr tangrajan work along with dipankar so all these people have to be credited not just the present thing who have nailed it and we uh, and we are very happy that the government of india has given the remains to uh, georgia because people say when i was making a presentation in a very important uh, uh, platform which is called the caba central board for advisory they are telling me why do you want to give the bones to uh, to georgia as the bones belong to our country how did it belong to our country it has been found in our country it has been found in goa but the remains is of the human being who have been canonized as a saint who has been captured by one ruler kept in prison bourbon came to india just because you find it in india or find it in goa we will not say that it is it is belonging to us yes technically it is an antiquity technically it has to be documented technically there are rules and regulation for sharing but here comes the mea minister of external affairs they see it holistically archaeology sees narrowly scientific sees in a different way father may be seeing in a different way but the mea ministry of external affairs understands the international relationship so if you can imagine people are indians are studying in go uh, in georgia we are doing business in georgia and if we give the relics of the saint imagine the image of our country imagine how much we can gain out of this emotion Uh, connect between the two and i'm happy this could have happened because when the government of, when archaeological of india at that point of time when they asked me 
what do you feel? Well, should the bonds be given to Georgia? Georgia? I give an answer. It's in record saying, yes, it should be given. Then I get a counter answer. Don't you know the rules and regulation? Then I told them, why do you ask me? If you ask me, I will say yes. And to, for rules and regulations, for government of India to decide. So government of India has taken a decision above archaeological survey of India department on the external affairs. So everything has got a connect, sir. Everything has got a connect. It cannot be just isolated work. This is the report. This is the publication that has come in. It's a very important publication having a very high impact factor on this thing. And we solved the riddle. We have solved the bone. You can imagine for a father, you can imagine for a church, how important is the relic of a saint. For an archaeologist, it may be just a bone from the site. For, an, uh, for a scientist in laboratory, he has achieved because till now in India, subcontinent, South Asia, ancient DNA has not been extracted. It has not been sequenced. It has not been amplified. It has not been matched. So credit goes to India laboratory. Credit goes to ASI. Credit goes to Father and the church who supported me in Old Goa and uh, the bishop himself who was aware of what was happening and, and Father Pereira uh, Loyola came to all the presentations that I was making. And he was the one when I had a lot, lot of opposition supported me as an individual. Maybe he was not supporting the, 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 the things that was happening out there, but as me, he had trust in me that what I was doing as a team leader was doing for the benefit of the mankind and everyone involved. And this is what the Georgians, when they came, they're religious people. For them, they said, we don't want scientific analysis. You have got done it archaeologically. The reference is there in this. Uh, oh, you are, all your team has testified. Don't take it to the next step because they could not wait. Now everything falls okay. Everything is smiling. Everything is okay. But at that point of time, imagine this, this image must have been of uh, 2006 November. Can you imagine so much time takes place? This is archaeology. You cannot. For, you have waited for 400 years. Can you not wait for another 10 years? No, it's very difficult. A human being cannot wait. I know it. He cannot wait. So uh, the, the archaeologist is there, Alexander is there on the uh, having a t-shirt, Father Georgi is there, whom I respect him a lot. He has come to India six times. Poor father never knew where to go. He has done, met people, cleared people, did everything in his command to get to the remains. And ultimately, we could. And, ultim and as I say, I'm an archaeologist, I'm a conservator. I don't want to plunder a site. I want to conserve a site. After doing all this thing, I just don't want credit and say that this is what I've got, this is what I've done. No, unless you preserve and conserve the site, Goa site is a heavy rainfall site. We have to preserve the site. Not only Augustine, even Basilica of Bomb Jesus. I'm not getting into that. Even there, I've got a philosophy, a methodology, how to preserve that. Father, I know how to work about it, but ultimately, I was not supported at that point of time. I could not take it up. But later, maybe I will be able to guide how to go about it. This is my presentation that I has done in 2014. In Georgia, it is something very difficult to define. People, they say coming back to the country. This is 2014, and this is the diorama. You know, if you excavate, the site is destroyed. You have to record the site, not only in photograph document, but we went one step ahead. We made an interpretation center. We recreated what was there at the site. So if you go to the site, you will not find anything. You go to the museum, we have recreated with our interpretation. This is what we have left behind in Goa. Though I have retired, I have left the shores, but my, my emotions and spirit and energy is still there in Goa. Thank you so much, uh, Tahir, sir, for your wonderful insights. Hello. So where does, what image does uh, of Goa get created in this important uh, historical location from being just a tourism hub uh, with some archaeological sites around for tourists to go? But now we are into the very historical moment of being preservance of uh, an important relic which has got such a historical importance. So how do you see image of India and Goa uh, getting in the eyes of the uh, outer world? There is no doubt that India is so rich in its archaeology and history. Many, many, many more nations across the world. Richer, uh, I mean, uh, India is very rich in its history, in its archaeological sites, and, 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 and it has so much to give to the rest of the world. Goa has also a part in that. Goa has also its history, its archaeology. And when I say archaeology and history, I don't mean only church uh, history and church archaeology, we have fantastic archaeological sites 
throughout the state of Goa, belonging to, to, the, to the dynasties that uh, preceded the Portuguese. We still have them, uh, uh, archaeological sites dating, dating back to you know, prehistoric uh, ones. So for all this, Goa is so important. Uh, old Goa is particularly important because of the church component. The, there are beautiful, there were beautiful churches. There are still some of them left, but most of them are uh, demolished. In 1834, there was a, a decree from the government of the, uh, uh, the Portuguese government expelling all the religious orders from the state. And therefore, all these convents that were there in Old Goa and elsewhere fell into disuse, fell into ruins because there was nobody to take care of them. So, but now that archeological importance of Goa and historical importance of Goa remains. And uh, I hope that uh, people across the world will be attracted to Goa, not only because of its beaches and its uh, parties, but also because of the importance of the archeological content that Goa has which embraces all communities, not only the Christian community. Thank you, Father, uh, for your uh, wonderful insights. And thank you, uh, Mr. Tahir, for your uh, the, taking us through that wonderful journey. And it's been a pleasure uh, interacting with both of you. I'm sure uh, not only Goa, but the entire country as a whole will be now recognized as a preservation of history and culture of not only India, but also the international connections that we have via the various dynasties that have ruled India coming from outside and their remnants here.